In this video I'm going to show you how to add additional interfaces to your viral devices and how to get serial interfaces into topologies that contain viral devices. I've been asked a number of times how to configure serial interfaces on viral devices or how to change these gigabit interfaces on the viral devices. So firstly, viral devices do not support serial interfaces. You can find this question asked in various places online, including Reddit, with the answer that viral doesn't support serial interfaces. There are blog entries on websites such as Packet Pushers saying that Viral supports switching out of the box, but GNS3 doesn't. GNS3 supports the configuration of serial interfaces on routers, whereas Viral does not. Now, as I've explained previously, this statement is not true. See my video linked below where I discuss the various switching options in GNS3. But as I've mentioned, you find this question in many places asking how to support serial interfaces with Viral. Okay, so here's my GNS3 topology. Viral devices do not support serial interfaces. These two routers are iOS V routers that I've imported into GNS3. This is the version of image that I'm using and the number of adapters that have been configured is four. You could change that number if you wanted to, but you need to remove the links first. So what I'll do is delete that link and then configure this router with, let's say, 10 interfaces. So now notice I have 10 interfaces that I can connect on this viral iOS V router. Now, if you want to add serial interfaces to your network, the way to do that is to use a DynaMips router. In this example, I'm using a Cisco 3725 router. DynaMips routers allow you to change the interfaces available that is platform dependent. But as an example, I could add three WIC1Ts to this router or add a WIC2T to the router. So now, notice I have multiple serial interfaces that I can use on this router. So if you want to add serial interfaces to your GNS3 topologies, what you can do is mix viral devices with DynaMips devices. So as an example, I could connect this viral router to the DynaMips router and connect that viral router to this DynaMips router and then delete this interface. So what I've got now is a connection from a viral iOS V router to a DynaMips router. I've got two viral routers and two DynaMips routers in the topology. And again, just like any devices in GNS3, I can move them around to make the topology look pretty, and then I could start them up. So even though viral devices don't support serial interfaces, you can add serial interfaces to your topologies by using DynaMips routers. Please see my other videos which I've linked below, which explain how to import and configure viral devices as well as DynaMips devices. But as an example, on router one, and let me change the name to router one, DynaMips, show IP interface brief shows us that we have multiple serial interfaces on the router. In this example, serial two slash zero is connected. So I could no shut that interface and then do something similar on this router. So router two DynaMips interface serial two slash zero no shut it. And in this example, I'll give it an IP address as follows. And then I could do something similar on router one. And then I could ping from router one 
to router 2. Once my viral routers boot up, I could configure IP addresses on them and then exchange routes through OSPF. So again, it's very easy to add serial interfaces to a GNS3 topology by using Dynamips routers. Viral routers don't support serial interfaces, but a lot of the Dynamips routers do. So there's nothing stopping you mixing both Dynamips and viral routers in your GNS3 topologies. So in this example, I'll enable OSPF on my routers to exchange routes between them to show you that I can get my viral routers to communicate with one another via the Dynamips routers. I'm gonna bypass the startup config on these two viral routers. So I'll call this router two viral, interface gigabit zero one, no shut it, IP address 10.1, dot three dot two router OSPF one network and I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces. I'll do something similar on viral one, so host name router one viral interface gigabit zero one no shut IP address 10.1.1.1, router OSPF 1, network, and enable OSPF on all interfaces. Show IP OSPF neighbor, show IP interface brief. OSPF relationship was just formed as I was doing that, so show IP OSPF neighbor. We've got a neighbor relationship established. We are also learning routes through OSPF. So I should be able to ping a viral router two from viral router one, which I can. And to prove that, I'll do a debug on this side. And then ping from viral one to viral two, and you can see the pings have been received. To prove that again, I could go on to router one, my Dynamips router, and shut the serial interface down. And what you'll notice now is the network is unreachable. We aren't able to ping viral router two. When I no shut the interface and the serial interface comes up and the routes are updated, we should see that the ping start succeeding. On this side, we see pings arriving. And now on this side, we see that the pings are succeeding. So that was a simple example of integrating both viral and Dynamips routers using serial interfaces and Ethernet interfaces. GNS3 makes this very easy. You can have full-blown switching in GNS3. You can have serial interfaces. You can integrate multiple vendors. There are many, many options available in GNS3 for interoperability testing, as well as testing various large topologies. I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.